Yo, what is this? 55 requests. Yo, man, what is it? A, 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 87, 90 requests, man. What is this? Yo, man, how, yo, 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 100 requests, man. What is this, shit, bro? Hey, what's going on, everybody? In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to get Webpack set up from scratch. Let's do it. So before we begin, let's discuss the term module bundler. If you Google the phrase, what is Webpack, you'll see that we're mostly only greeted with one response, and that is Webpack is a module bundler. And although this is indeed what Webpack is, the definition is not ideal for beginners, including myself. So before we can really understand the phrase module bundler, we first need to understand what a module is. A module is simply a JavaScript file that abides by one specific rule. It makes use of an exports object within it. Let's say I have two JavaScript files, an app.js file and another file called helperfunctions.js. If I wanted to make use of only specific functions for my helperfunctions.js file and use those specific functions within app.js, rather than revealing all the functions to the global namespace, I could use what's known as an exports object to say, okay, if this file is imported into app.js using the require statement, only the functions or data attached to an exports object will be available for use. Everything else within the helperfunctions.js file is inaccessible because it wasn't attached to an exports object. So since this particular file is a JavaScript file making use of the exports object, we can officially declare it as a module. When using the require statement with something like Node.js, you don't need any external tool like Webpack or Browserify. But since we want to use the require statement for code that's meant for the browser, we do need Webpack to bundle any modules that we require. And this will essentially concatenate them into one single file. And this single file is known as a bundle. So in this course, we're going to make use of all the features that come with Webpack right out of the box, including module bundling, automatic bundling that occurs whenever a file is saved, and JavaScript minification. So basically, we're going to learn how to install Webpack, set up a configuration file, and then we're going to figure out how to compile and create a bundle for a production. So let's begin from a clean state and start by installing Webpack. Let's open up Terminal and create a project directory. I have my terminal set by default to open to an htdocs directory, but yours will probably open to what's known as your home directory. And this is represented by a tilde. And if you don't know what a tilde is, it's all good. It's just a little squiggly horizontal line. And this little horizontal line is usually below your escape key. So I'm going to go ahead, head on over to my home directory so we're on the same page. And then I'm going to cd into a directory called web. And this is where I personally, this is where I store all my web development work. So once we're in a directory where we can easily reference all of our work pertaining to web development, we're going to create a project directory specifically for Webpack using the make directory command. And the make directory command is just mkdir. All it does is makes a folder. So we're going to cd into that and create some default files using the touch command. So let's create an index.html file to represent our site's homepage. And then we'll create an app.js file to represent our main JavaScript file. And that's all we'll need at the moment. So right now we have all the files required for a basic website, but Let's say that we wanted to import a separate JS file into app.js. Normally to do this, we would go ahead and add a second script tag to our index.html file. But if we were to do this, we would be revealing all of that file's contents into what's known as a global namespace. Basically, every single thing within that file would be available for use in all of the other files, even if we don't want them to be. So if we want to specify what functions and what variables we want to import into another file, then we need Webpack in order to do so. So let's go ahead and install Webpack now. If you type in Webpack getting started into Google and click the first result, you should be presented with a quick startup guide briefing you how to install Webpack. So go ahead and scroll down a bit and we'll go ahead and take this snippet of code, paste it into the terminal, and Webpack should begin installing. Now what we're doing here is we're installing a global version of Webpack. And what that means is we're installing Webpack so that we can use it across all the directories, any folder available within our computer, rather than being restricted to just one particular folder. And by doing this, we only have to install Webpack once rather than doing it multiple times on a project by project basis. So the main use of doing this is for efficiency gains. We don't really have to wait for Webpack to install every single time, we're just gonna do it once. So now that Webpack is installed, let's test it out by running an our app.js file. Let's add a little bit of code to our app.js file for testing purposes, and now we're going to save it. So as I mentioned in the last video, in order to have Webpack compile one file into another, we must first type Webpack into the terminal. 
followed by webpack, we're going to specify the name of the file we want webpack to compile, and then we're going to specify the name of the file that we want app.js to be compiled into. So we're going to run this, and voila, just like that, webpack just successfully bundled our code. So we use webpack to create a bundle, but now let's create our own separate JavaScript module that we can require and bundle within app.js. This will basically exhibit Webpack's ability to pull in external JavaScript modules and bundle them all into one file. So hypothetically, let's think of an exciting example. Let's say I wanted to pull in my name from a separate file and use it within app.js. Super lame, I know, but it helps exhibit the point. So let's create a file, and I'm going to call this one name.js correspondingly. And you'll see that we're not making use of an export subject as it yet, so we would actually declare this as a simple JavaScript file, not a module. But as soon as we add my name variable to an exports object, we're officially telling Webpack, make this variable available whenever name.js is required. So let's go ahead and clear out our terminal real quick, and then we'll head on over to app.js to actually require the name.js file. So we're going to create a new line, create a variable for our name.js module, and then we're going to go ahead and require it. And when we require it, we need to tell Webpack that name.js is in the same directory as our app.js and build.js file. So we signify that by adding a dot slash, and all this means is that we're going to be looking for this file in the same directory we're in already. So now I'm going to go ahead and type in name to require name.js, and then I'm going to close it out. And this is all we have to do in order to ensure all the contents within name.js go into this variable called name. So now we can make use of it within app.js. So let's change yellow to something that follows the lesson a little better. So let's say that we want the browser to print out hello Chris. In order to do this, I'm going to insert hello into the console log statement, and then I'm going to concatenate my name in there using the name variable from name.js. And this variable has a property attached to it. If we refer to our name.js file, this property is called name. So to actually access this variable, to actually access this property per se, we would actually have to type name.name. .name. We're accessing a property within a name object. So if we save that, and let's go ahead and add a space right after hello. Otherwise, it's going to say hello Chris, all one word. We want it to say hello space Chris. So if we save this, we need to run it through Webpack in order for this to work, and we're going to go ahead and do that now. I'm going to type in Webpack, the name of the file I want to be compiled and then the name of the file we want app.js to be compiled into, which is build.js. So we're going to go ahead and run that, and let's go ahead and open this up in the browser. I'm going to head on over to index.html, open it up using Sublime Text, and then I'm going to view it in the browser. So we see we don't have any HTML elements just yet, but that's okay. We just want to look at the console log statement. So we're going to go ahead and open up the console. So now as you see, we successfully pulled name.js into app.js as notified by the console log statement, hello Chris. And we can refer back to our code, go head on over to app.js. It's printing exactly what we thought it would. The string hello and the name Chris, which is referred to in name.js. And the cool thing about this is if we view the source code, right click on the document and click view page source, we're going to see that we only have one file being referenced and that is build.js. So rather than importing importing both name.js and app.js into index.html, we are successfully combining two files into one. And this reduces the amount of requests to the browser, and it also makes sure that we're only exporting the variables that we want to be imported into app.js, rather than every single one being imported and possibly conflicting with variables from other files. So next topic to cover is automatic bundling whenever a file is saved. We don't want to have to tell Webpack that it must compile app.js and build.js every single time because quite frankly that gets really annoying and it's just really inconvenient for us. But thankfully Webpack has what's known as a webpack.config.js file. And what this does is it prevents the need for us to have to type in app.js and build.js over and over again. Instead, we can do something different. We can get rid of build.js and app.js and run Webpack and although the watch functionality isn't running right now, it will as soon as we create a config file and run the statement once again. So we're going to do just that. We're going to head on over to the browser, head back to our Webpack tutorial page, and then we're going to scroll down until we see something called a config file. And here it is. So as you see, we're going to be adding a webpack.config.js file, and we're going to be copy and pasting this code into that. And once we do this, we'll be able to run Webpack and it'll compile our code automatically. So let's do that now. Send back to Sublime Text, go to our terminal, and we're going to touch that file that I just mentioned. We're going to touch webpack.config.js. So now that we have this file, let's go ahead and enter it, and we're going to paste that code that we just copied into it. So there are a few things we have to change here before we can just type in webpack into the terminal. First, we need to change the entry point. As you see, 
Webpack's entry point is called entry.js, but ours is called app.js. We want to compile app.js into build.js. So that just means our output file name is going to be build.js rather than bundle.js. And about this module section right here with loaders, let's not worry about that right now. We're going to go ahead and dive into that in the next video. But right now, I just want to focus on setting up a basic config file. And now if we run Webpack in our terminal, without typing app.js or build.js, you'll see that we successfully bundled our file. So pretty cool stuff. Now, if we want to take this one step further to the point where whenever we make a change in app.js, Webpack compiles our bundle automatically, well, we can do that too. So rather than typing webpack dash dash watch, we can make sure that we only type webpack and it's going to watch our files automatically. And we do this by adding an option to our exports object right here. The option we're going to add is watch and we're going to give it a value of true. So now when we type webpack, run it. You'll see that the terminal doesn't end the statement right away. So if I go back to app.js, let's just delete this line for the purposes of showing you the watch statement in the config file. Run it. You'll see on the right hand side that webpack compiled the file. So if I head back to sublime text on the left hand side over here and I begin to create another console log statement. And let's insert hello world into this console log statement. You'll see on the right hand side that webpack has successfully bundled our file automatically once again. So that successfully takes out the need for us to type webpack any entry points or any output points within the terminal. We can successfully do this all within webpack.config.js and it saves us a ton of time in the process and automates things, which is awesome. But to top this lesson off, let's go over minifying your JavaScript. Minification is the process of taking out all the white space within a file so that we can make our file smaller and quicker for the browser to load. So let's go ahead and check, let's go ahead and check the file size of our current build.js file. I'm going to cancel out of our webpack process just so we can view our files in the finder. Type in open dot and it should open up in finder. And I'm going to inspect our build.js file. So you'll see that currently our build.js file is two kilobytes. And we want for the amount of code we have in app.js, we definitely want to make sure that this is smaller. So what we can do is we can run webpack in production mode. And we do this by typing in webpack and just adding a dash p to the end. So once we do this, Webpack should run in production mode, and if we visit our build.js file, you're going to see everything is minified. All the white space is taken out, and all the stuff we don't need isn't there anymore. So now if we go back to our finder and inspect build.js, you'll see that it's been compressed to 352 bytes, much smaller compared to its previous 2 kilobytes. Very useful for optimizing your code and ensuring that your site is as quick as possible when loaded. So that covers a good amount in regards to what we can do with Webpack right out of the box, but there's still so much more to cover with loaders, and we'll get into that in the next video. So for using Webpack to compile your SAS and ES6 code, and for lending purposes, stay tuned for the next video on Webpack loaders. Otherwise, like always, I hope you guys have a freaking awesome day, and I'll see you next time. Later, guys. What is this 55 requests? Yo, man, what is it? Eight, 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 seven, nine, eight requests, man, what is this? Yo, man, I, yo, 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 a hundred requests, man, what is this shit, bro?